Hi, you guys. So just before you start watching or listening to the podcast, I wanted to let you know that our audio mixer, I had no idea wasn't recording the first 25 minutes because the memory card was full. After the first 25 minutes, I figured it out and we fixed it. So the audio from the first 25 minutes of the podcast is the camera only. So it sounds not as great as the normal podcast, but after 25 minutes, the audio mixer picked back up and it's way better. So I just wanted to warn you guys, the first 25 minutes is not ideal audio but it gets way better after that and this is such a great episode i just wanted to thank meg for coming on we loved having her we loved hearing her story and talking about salon ownership so i hope you enjoy this episode welcome back to just jay-z you guys it's jesse and kj and we have a guest meg brown so, so fun so introduce yourself a little bit before we jump in so they can get to know you okay i'm meg i'm meg brown balayage on instagram i am a stylist behind the chair i own a hybrid of commission and booth rent salon in south jordan utah and i have my own little hair extension company online I educate oh, just sometimes. My... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's my, it's my, she's my side chick. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about my salon with my, yeah. the salon's my side chick. Yeah. I love that. So a little bit of everything, like just love the beauty industry. And What's the name of your salon? My salon is called Ivory Salon and Sweets. Okay. Yeah. 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 We did a class there. Yeah, we yeah. did a uh, Robin's class. Yeah, that was so fun. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you because we're doing an episode about salon ownerships, the highs and lows, the good and the bad, and we're going to get deep into this topic. But to start, we are going to do highlights and lowlights. So this is basically where we share a good thing and a bad thing of the week. So um, I would say, Kaylee, you want to start? Here's our highlights and lowlights of the week. Um, I can go. My lowlight, so... Ruby, my dog, was uh-huh. supposed to get spayed in a couple of days, uh-huh. and they had her come in and do some pre-surgical blood work, which I'm glad that I did, because they called me and they were like, we found an abnormality. <gasps> so they think that she has this abnormality where her platelets, some her bone marrow spits out larger size platelets, so the, blood, the test that they ran wasn't detecting them, so it looked like she had a low platelet count. Oh. So we had to do more testing, and then they had to send it off to Auburn University to like get this definite yes or no. I guess it's really common in cattle care. Of course. And so hopefully she does have that abnormality, because then they can continue. If they don't, though, they can't do it. They have to do more testing because... They wouldn't be able to cut her open or else like she wouldn't be able to oh. clot her blood and like so Holy she would like crap. bleed out from time. So wait, was this testing mandatory or did you choose? No. They just texted me so and they were like, Your pet insurance covers uh uh pre-surgical blood work. Yeah. So if you want to, you're more than welcome to. And I'm glad that I did. Wow. I don't know what so <laughs> hopefully it would have been awful. Yeah, so we had to push it back. But hopefully in like a couple of days, we'll be able to hear what's yeah. going on. So and if she has something, like does it affect her life? Um, I just would hope that she would, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But we're hoping that she just does have the abnormality because mm-hmm. then it's just reading differently on okay. the blood test. But there's only a few places in the states that do the testing so they have to send it off to auburn university so yeah wow all for a dog (laughs) (laughs) it's too expensive do you have dogs or i do i have one yeah what kind is it yeah he is a havanese poodle mix and he just turned one so he's kind of still puppy yep yeah so she's her dog's how old she's six months oh yeah so you're in it but (laughs) i'm gonna be a toddler i'm just gonna be so ticked if i if she can't have surgery and then i have to deal with a dog that has a period Oh, I forgot about that. Ew. I don't want to deal with that's that. That's what Kira has to do. Yeah. Just read this like that. Oh, that yes. sucks. Yeah. But that's my low light. Okay. My highlight is um, my, one of my clients the other day got me a gift card to her esthetician. Oh. And I've never had a client get me a gift before, so, so nice. that was so exciting. Did you get like a facial or something? Yeah. <gasps> that's so yeah. yeah, so I'm excited. Was it one of your regulars? Yeah. Oh, fun. So that's a good one. Yeah, you deserve some pampering. I know. I'm so excited. So, awesome. Yeah. I love that. 
Okay, I would say my low light is that, I, I was telling Bailey this actually while we were working today, I took a melatonin, well I took, it, it was Kourtney Kardashian's, uh, oh, Lemmy. Lemmy. Mm -hmm. I took the Lemmy Sleep, which is melatonin, and I took two last night because I've not been sleeping, I've just been like waking up and probably because I'm just always anxious, so I was like, I need a good night's sleep, so I took it and I still feel drugged, and it's 5 p.m. Like, I've been out of it all day, just, like, foggy. Oh, wow. I know, they yeah, work. You're like, no, they, yeah, they, <laughs> I know. Well, Katie's addicted to Benadryl, so yeah. you're like, oh. <laughs> so I just have been, like, off today. Like, my brain's not working. So that's my low light. My highlight is Taylor Swift's I, Oh, yeah, I meant to say that. I am so shocked that wasn't your highlight. I know. I don't know what I was thinking. I you were, like, wearing the Taylor Swift and everything. And you texted me last night. I did, like, right? When I, I, I like, can we just talk about this one? Yeah, this, we could for sure. This is now a Taylor Swift podcast. We do. Talk we can digest Taylor. it a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. What are your thoughts? Digest? Is that one of the words? I mean, I've digested it. Now let's regurgitate it. Okay. <laughs> well, I just thought, I mean, because everybody was anticipating reputation. Which I was sold on that. Yeah. yeah. So she I. Was she was tricking us. She was. She you know, Because, you know. well, there's multiple things that led up to it because Jesse texted me and her website, taylorswift.com, was down. Yeah. And Jesse was like, it's happening tonight. And so then, but then she had like the code word that was jumbled. Yeah. And if you look, dissect it, it uh, says um, red, herring. red herring, which just means like a clue that was whatever. Oh. So that's wild. But I really thought she was like, with her outfit, I thought she was hinting at reputation, yes. like in a subtle way, like the hair, Same. she was wearing gloves, like I just, it yes. was giving like, it was yes. giving, uh, like what you made me do. Yes, it was. And so I was like, but then she said it, also it was on like, the this website, also makes sense too. It was three, two, one, the letters, and that was the day reputation was released, someone said. So I was like, there were so many points, like signs that pointed to it. Yeah. Insane. But I'm shocked that we're getting a whole new one. I am. And she's been working on it for two years. So was she working on this before Midnight's? No, because Midnight's was a compilation, a compilation of, of over 13 years. Of 13 sleepless nights. True. So, but, okay. I, yeah, as soon as she said, this is my 13th Grammy, I'm like, I know! <laughs> but also I heard a theory, too, that if she releases... Okay, so if you're counting the re-recordings as albums, mm -hmm. if she does this, then Reputation, then Debut, that'll be 13 total. Oh, so wow. she kind of had to do another album so they land it on 13, unless she does more in the future, obviously, but isn't that crazy oh. too? Um, and then, so I saw this and it says, this is honestly one of the funniest things she's ever done. So it says the tortured man club yes! if you looked at joe alvin's conversations with friends you'd see a group chat titled the tortured man club this is the name that joe and paul mescal's mutual friend chose for their whatsapp group after joe was cast in the upcoming sally rooney series uh -huh. and that was with phoebe bridgers x x Image. Yep. Is that not funny? And now tortured poets department. Like, love it. this is gonna be the best break about them ever. I know. But also has like a sexual like connotation. Like the 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 cover is kind of like very sexy, sophisticated. Yeah. It's like a I can't wait. Theory. It is. I I wonder what the vibe's gonna be. What do you guys think? Like, is it gonna be folklore? -esque? I think Rock, it's gonna like yeah. Country? I can see it like Billie Eilish vibes, or like she's oh. you know she's so close with Lana Del Rey. Like I mm -hmm. can see it kind of going up. I could. You're right. Yeah, but I feel like folklore. Yeah, yeah. Like, like more like, because Midnight's was kind of an extension, I feel like, of some ever more folklore vibes. Yeah. Like it was a little more calm, but like then it had other things. But man, I am so excited. Yeah, it's the day I, before Jagger's birthday. Oh, I was like, this would be a good good couple so days. So exciting. I can't wait. I am shocked to my core. I am so excited. I, yeah, I was not expecting it. But and we're going to get some Travis songs. Yeah. I bet. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. It makes me think of Dead Poet Society. That's what I keep saying too. Yes. <laughs> you know, I saw a post and somebody was like, I need an AP lit refresher before this comes out. <laughs> Whoever's in the Taylor Swift course at whatever colleges <laughs> teach that class. Yeah, it just makes me think of Dead Poet yeah. Society. So. I'm so curious what this is going to be like. Wow. My like captain, my captain. Yeah, no, literally. <laughs> You're the only one that went to college here, I'm pretty sure. Did you go to college? Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. short, no. No, but no. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that's typically the case. Kaylee graduated. She's smart. Okay, do you want to do your highlight and low light? 
Oh gosh, I mean, Taylor Swift was definitely one of mine. Mm -hmm. We were watching the Grammys. I let my daughter stay up. My daughter is six, and she is a huge Taylor Swift fan. She was Taylor Swift for Halloween. No. I like made her the, oh, yeah. the, the fringe like Midnight's costume. Yes. Like, okay, yeah. And so we let her stay up to watch it. You and made it? I did. I had to. Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but we had to it. replicate it. So yeah. I did my DIY That's that costume amazing. for her. But she's a huge Swiftie and. She was excited for it and stayed up, but she was very disappointed that Taylor didn't sing. Oh, and I was yeah. like, I don't think she's going to sing, honey, because... Why? Yeah. Well, my <laughs> mom said the same thing. My mom was like, why is she not singing? I'm like, mm, I just think that she's too big to sing, and she's not... It's so Taylor to not sing. It is. Like, it's, it's so not, true. Unless it's her tour. Yeah. And, well, and she's not going to waste her vocals. Yeah, she has a show in like a few that. days. Yeah. So, um, do you see she was like jamming out when Olivia was performing, which I thought they were enemies. So I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was. She was standing up and she was. She's a hype girl. Up. She does that for everyone. And I yeah. actually love it. Yeah. Well, she did it for Miley Cyrus after Miley Cyrus called out the crowd. That was so. Wait, I didn't hear about this. What? She's like starts singing flowers and she goes. Don't act like none of you know this song because I guess yeah, totally no one was dancing. No one was dancing to it. It was no. she was like rocking out and everyone just like. Wait, good for her though. That's yeah. Hilarious. yeah. Wow. She was wild. There was also TikToks about how like when Taylor announced her album, the crowd was like not happy. Yeah. Like, that's the, so it's awkward. very. Well, it was people. really quiet. Yeah. People, yeah. I think, are kind of in the way. Why she did it? Because they're like, she's that's just so not bad. the time to do it. But she's done that before, hasn't yeah. she? Well, why not? Yeah, she's making it, sorry. it for her fans. It's yeah. all for her fans. Exactly. It makes sense. Yeah. But it, it steals their thunder or whatever. They're all just like, great, now if I release an album this year, it's not going to do well. Like, <laughs> Taylor's going to win. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Um, anyway, so that was like, probably going to be mine. Since y'all stole it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can still have that. I can it, yeah. Taylor for sure, always. Yeah. And then, um, my low... My low has to be that I have been so sick, yeah. but it's linked to some really exciting news. Yeah. Um, Maybe I'm, later. I'm are having you, a baby. Are you going to say it? Yeah. Okay, I'm like, do you want to it? How far are you? Yeah. Um, I'm like two months, so that'll be good. I'm the same way as you. The minute I found out, I was just like, I'm going to tell everyone. Yeah. Once yeah, yeah, I have I just, my appointment, I just have yeah. to tell people. Totally. So. Well, congrats. Okay. We're excited Thanks. for you. Yeah. Hopefully the sickness goes away soon. It's, you're in the thick yeah. of it. Yeah. I just need to make it a few more weeks. I'm like, I can do it. It's fine. Were you yeah. really sick with your other kids? Pretty much all of them. Oh. Yeah. My second one, he was like my easiest pregnancy. And it's funny because he's my sweetest child. So I'm like, you're my sweet boy. Yeah. Like, you took care of mommy. Everyone yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> you have two girls? I have one girl, two boys. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So. We were actually just talking earlier about how boys are just better. Yeah. <laughs> like, so girls can be so sassy and boys are just so like... They just love their mamas. So. Yeah. How old are your kids again? So my daughter is six, okay. my son is almost five, and then my baby's one. Aww. So. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can wow. yeah. Literally, I forgot <laughs> you just had one. Yeah. Wow. When did your baby turn yeah. one? In the end of October. So he's like 16. I can't and imagine being almost. pregnant and having Joey at... Oh my gosh, wow. You are a superhero. You just watch me do it. And yeah, I'll just watch you on a distance. Yeah, I'm just saying, so I'm good. Yeah. We're good. Okay, well, now that we're talking about you, tell us about your story, how you got into salon ownership and what you do. I just want to hear everything about you. Okay, yeah. I mean, part of my story getting into the beauty industry is really common and cliche, but there's parts of it that are totally not. So I actually love to share my story because I, feel like, I feel like it can resonate with a lot of different kind of stylists out there. Yeah. Um, so I always wanted to be a hairstylist. I'm that little girl that grew up wanting to do hair, always wanted to. And then I had my first salon experience when I was, I was 12 or 13, my first time going into the salon to get highlights, which was a huge deal. Yes. I had to beg for it. My mom is like, plain Jane does not get her hair done, does not really? get her nails done, like just did not grow up doing that. She grew up with all brothers. So, mm -hmm. um, I had to beg for it. I was the girly girl and she took me in and I fell in love with my hairdresser. I'm Aww. still in touch with her. Aww. She still owns a salon in my small town where I grew up in Syracuse, Utah. Her name is Amber I and it's called Fringe. Oh, it's tiny, tiny. And yeah. so she owns a, a, the salon up there still. Cute. And she just made me feel amazing. Like mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and my mom was amazing, but just not girly girl so yeah. she couldn't teach me how to do my hair and do my makeup so then when I met this yeah. hairstylist that was all hair and makeup I just felt she was my role model yes like growing up? Okay. and so my hairstylist became my role model and so and she owned the salon so obviously I'm like I want to be like Amber yeah. I want to have kids and I want to own my business and be a hairstylist so it just really took off from there isn't it crazy if you wouldn't have gotten your hair done like your whole life could be different yeah like that really influenced you yeah she was like 
one of those people yeah. that like they say like strangers change your life and she was like my stranger Huge. that changed my life for sure yeah. so um yeah so then I was really set on being a hairstylist and more specifically a salon owner I wanted mm -hmm. to own a salon like her so I uh, actually started hair school my senior year of high school um because honestly because it was free that's smart I wish <laughs> my I parents let so me do crazy. it because it was free and so I, I I did that but when I graduated once you graduate then you have to pay tuition and all this stuff and my my parents want to pay for it so they're like so wait you like they still like half your school for free yes so I was halfway graduated. through yes yeah, so oh, I was halfway through and so like okay now you're the, the public school no longer funds for that so yeah. you, I had to pay for my hours and it's like a certain amount of dollars per hour I mean it was just like a long time no ago. for sure yeah that's what we but, did yeah. um wow. so I had to they had to start paying and I, I did get a small scholarship but it was like nothing so I started working Literally working at Costa Vida. Oh, I love it. Work Pinto. So yeah. I was trying to, I love that. I to pay for hair school, but it just, it was just too expensive. And my yeah. parents, my parents were really pushing for college. I did get an academic yeah. scholarship and they really were pushing that for that, even yeah. though they knew I wanted to do hair. And so, um, I honestly just couldn't pay for it. And I was a beauty school dropout. No. Yeah. How far so, along were you? Like, how many I hours? was like, so they did it so different at the school I went to, but they would, you would do each category at a time so I completed nails oh. I completed aesthetics it was Cosmo oh. and so I barely started hair so oh, I, so I had done nails in Cosmo okay. or in aesthetics but I hadn't I had barely gotten into my hair like I had done like the uh, I don't even know what they call it like the book work but I just yeah. barely got on the floor so mm. I hadn't done that much wow. so anyways then I ended up just like moving out of my house you know I was 18 yeah. I kind of just did what, did what my friends did I did go to college for a semester I used my scholarship because yeah. that was free yeah. um and just kind of had fun and whatever and um like two or three years went by wow. and I was doing honestly nothing I was um I was bartending no way <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's what I was doing when I met my husband okay and then I was just enjoying like single life young life yes. party whatever yeah, but you do and I met my husband and um he was a little bit older than me so he was a little more ready to settle down and okay. stuff and how did you meet um Oh, I have to tell it because it's very cliche and everyone loves the story and I hate to tell it. Um, his mom sat at my bar. No. <laughs> and I was her bartender. Okay, when you said cliche, so, I'm looking for you to like singles ward. You're like, no, oh, his mom no. sat at my bar. I was, oh, that was too late for me. I yeah. always <laughs> wanted to like bartend. I thought it would have been like the really? funniest job. Like yeah. to be able to hear like what it's people so have to say. It's like therapy, I'm sure. Yeah. That I, I, I went to college in Logan, so there's no bars in Logan. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to do up there. So. It's definitely fun. Like I, it was one of my favorite jobs. Besides doing hair, it was my favorite job. Yeah. Well, it's social too. Yeah, it's very like, social. You had your regulars. Yeah, very similar. Cool. So, so yeah, she sat at my bar. She's like, "You're so cute. I have a son. Like, can I give you his number?" And I was like, "No, lady. Like, yeah. you're cut off. Like, I'm not. So I'm not into dating." I was that like, was I, think so I, was, "I was 21. I was young. I was 21." Wow. And um, I was like, "I'm just really not interested." But she ended up leaving his phone number on her receipt. Okay. And I yeah. kept it in my pocket. And like, it was like three or four months later that yeah. I finally was like, "I could use wow. it for dinner. Like, I'm just gonna <laughs> check this guy." That was I'll literally. I, I asked him specifically to take me to Cheesecake Factory. I was like, "I'm really hungry. Your mom gave me your number." Like, <laughs> and so yeah, we met. I drove myself in case he was crazy because I could leave. Yes. And how old was he? He. So I was 21, and he's. Four and a half years older than me. Oh, okay. So not, not crazy bad. older. When we got married, he was 26. So okay. oh, just old enough where he was ready to settle and I was still a little bit in my party sure. phase. But yes. um, anyway, so yeah, we we pretty much hit it off. I mean, that first date, we had dinner. Then we, then we ended up buying tickets to go to a movie. Oh. And we ended up staying out till like four in the morning. And wow. I just, I got home and my, my mom, I was living at home at the time. Uh -huh. I was in, in between apartments. So I was at home and she was like, how was the date? And I just started bawling. <gasps> I was crying. She's like, "Oh no, it was so bad." Yeah. Like, and I'm like, "No, it was so good." And I was like, "I'm gonna marry him." Oh, like, I just knew it, and I was so pissed. I was so mad. Not ready for this. this. Yeah. So and then his mom was so happy. He, yeah. Oh, she, she takes full credit. credit. For it. Yes, yeah. she takes full credit for being her matchmaker. Ooh, I love that. So that's, <laughs> that's our story. But I love that so much. But I, anyway, it ties back into the hair industry because yeah. he. Um, I think it was our third, it was probably our second or third date. And like I said, he was just ready to sail down, Mr. Serious. And he like took me out to lunch on my lunch break between shifts at the bar. And um, he's like, so like, what's your dream? And I was just like, huh? Like, <laughs> like, 
I don't know. Like, he's like, what's your dream? Like, look into my eyes, like, looking into my soul. Like, what do you want to do? Like, wow. what's your dream? And I, I was so caught off guard because it seemed silly, but then I also just, like, was hit so deep because no one had asked me that in a long, long time. Yeah. So, um... I told him, well, my dream is to own a beautiful salon and be a hairstylist. And he's like, wait, what? Like, why are you going to UVU and bartending? And yeah. he's like, I don't know. Like, just, I don't have anyone that supports my dream. And it's a dream. It's not real. And yeah. that was years ago. It didn't seem like attainable anymore. But he was like my, my biggest fan. So for our next date, he took me to tour hair schools. No. Oh, yeah. Good God. So he was like, let's do it. I want to support you. Like, I'll pay for your hair school. Like, your mom will wow. pay for your hair school. Like, I'm wow. like, okay. You're like, hey, you should have <laughs> Yeah. So, what does he um, do yeah. at the time, or what does he do? So he um, was in college, also going to UVU, and then he was just in finance. Okay. So, yeah, he was doing personal finance, working cool. for Fidelity Investments at the oh, time. Nice. Now he works for a software company, but. Okay. Yeah, so, so he did that. So you started going to school. Did your you know, hours transfer over? Yeah, so I transferred my hours. Oh, wow. um, it was like pulling teeth, but yeah, yeah, they were, yeah, we were able to transfer my hours, and I was able to finish up at Taylor Andrews in Orem. Okay. Um, we got married in September Wait, last so year, at and my I building? started. Yes. Yeah, so you I were was, just oh, no. Yes. Yes. When I taught there, I was like, these yes. are the sinks that I washed in. Yes. I know. Is it like so weird? Kind of the same, but very but different. different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, totally. Oh, so wow. so yeah, I started hair school a month after we got married, and then wow. it's just been boom, 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 all the things ever since. Insane. And he's like my biggest supporter ever. So I, love that. I know it's a long story, but no, I love. I think that's such a cool story. Story. So yeah, that's awesome. You wow. Graduate, you start at a salon. Like what was your journey in the beginning and how did that lead to ownership? Yeah, so the beginning was actually really rough because, you know, uh Jeremy's my sugar daddy. <laughs> came from my school and all the stuff. Well, actually the the week I don't remember if it was like the day before or after, but the week I graduated hair school, he got let go. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> we had just signed on a townhouse, just got a brand new car, of course. Of course. We just got married. Yeah. And we, you know, we had our dog and we had our little life and um, he lost his job and it was very surprising yeah. and I obviously was making nothing because yeah. I was not working. I had stopped bartending to do, finish school. I was doing day and night school and trying mm -hmm. to get it done. And anyway, so I was kind of faced with this big decision and I had been assisting my last two or three months of school to okay. like get out there yeah. and I decided to just boost rent. I'm like, I'm going for it. Like, wow. Wow. you know, we have this lifestyle and you've done so much for me. He's worked so hard to put me through school and I've done, you know, nothing, not yeah. work, not, I haven't worked since we've been together. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a full clientele. I'm going to just hit the just ground running. In, so yeah. I did. I just started out booth running. I finished assisting for a couple more months. Okay. And that was in, gosh, when was that? In May. Okay. What year was this? In May, 2016. Okay. And in April of 2017, I hired my first assistant. I had a full clientele. It was fully booked. So it took no. me like just under a year. What do you think was the biggest thing that helped? Um, That grit. I okay. mean, this, that driving force the that I like, I had to. Yeah, I just, I had to. And I, I wanted to for him. I loved him. And he had supported my dream. And I was like, hey, let, let's That's my turn so to sweet. pull the weight. How and did you so, build your clientele? Um, you know, it's funny. Instagram was a completely different world in 2016. It was not, yeah. <laughs> it thing. was not and, yeah. at all what it was. So I, I will say I, I did definitely dive into Instagram and start figuring it out early on where it did work for me. I didn't have a significant amount of followers. I still don't, but that did work for me. But I would say I was mostly referral based. Yeah. And I think that's just, always going to be number one. I, I think. think it just goes mm -hmm. back to my first experience in the salon where yeah. that changed my life, where I felt heard and listened to and I had she's getting me diet coke and all that stuff so i just did that for my clients i just loved my clients i feel like you still back. yeah like you still talk about that and like i feel that with you when you post i think you're giving them an experience which yeah, is great i'm all about the experience mm -hmm. i love the making everyone feel like a kardashian in the chair yes. like i you know every even the 12 year old girls like yeah. i i love that and that, that just worked for me so that's, yeah that's i was awesome. do someone's hair then their sister then their aunt then their yes. friend and i'm just completely like referral based on it no, I, love, I love to hear that because i think nowadays people are so caught up in like the social media of yeah. it all like thinking that that's the only way that they can grow themselves which it is a great tool but you have to start somewhere yeah. and really mm -hmm. referral it's like the way to go. The biggest way, yeah. 100%. So how many salons did you work at before you opened yours? Um, so I worked at one, two, three, four. Wow, okay. Four salons. And then, and then what did it look like when you, like, how did you know you were ready? How did that journey happen? Um, well, I, uh, I kind of was in a spot in my career where I was like, I had, you know, I had a full clientele and I got an assistant. 
Um, and then my assistant started working kind of commission under me and I had this like this mini, mini, mini salon going and then I started getting into education and teaching at salons. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just felt like the next thing I was ready for was the salon, but um, yeah. this was in 2019. So COVID time. Yes. And okay. I was feeling like it was next for me. I was feeling very stuck in my career, okay. kind of like in a funk. And I like knew that was next and I had a lot of an amazing mentor, um, my salon owner at the time, Christina Cridal, who yeah. owned Intrepid and Orem. Yes. She was amazing. She's awesome. Um, just my biggest supporter as well. And she, does she doesn't even do that anymore, does she? Um, no, she doesn't. Yeah. She has an online like store, store. Yes. for body care and stuff like yes. that. But she's she totally can, pivoted, but she it's has. so like cool yeah. how she's been able it to is, do that. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah. So anyway, she was a good push always like always supporting and then my peers like my coworkers, were always like you should do it you should open a yeah. salon like you'd be so good at it and so I went to my husband and I was like I think it's the time I had Intrepid was closing and so I switched to a different salon and after just a few months there I just knew like mm -hmm. this isn't my fit I don't think I'm going to find a fit because the fit is like yeah. I need to make it myself yes. yeah and he was like oh my gosh COVID, you know it's kind of crazy yeah. so we kind of opted to do mini salon, oh, okay. mini salon version. So yes. what I did is I rented three suites oh, in a sweet wow. place here oh. in Pleasant Grove, actually. I didn't know that. So I did mini salon. So I got three suites. So we had four chairs okay. and I hired commission girls and we did mini, it was still called Ivory Salon. We called it Ivory Salon Suite. Yes. It was tiny. And it. we kind of ran that for about six months just okay. to see how it would go. So if we get a commission structure down and see how see how the economy was going and yes. all that stuff and it was just going so good so Amazing. at that point we decided to, to pull the trigger and we got the loan and we started our build out we did new construction so okay so you wanted to go up north what got you into thinking more up north okay so yeah I mean in Utah there's kind of two big counties for hair there's okay. Utah County and Salt Lake County yes and I always wanted to get just into Salt Lake County I had built my clientele in Utah County so I definitely wanted to be like on the border like somewhere that Ooh. wasn't too far that my clientele yeah. wouldn't follow me but I wanted to get out of Utah County, just just be different, yeah. get into a more people up there too. For yeah, clients. just like a, yeah. kind of a new like when we were looking in South Jordan. I mean, there was like no salons out there. Even still, there's yeah. only like maybe two or three big salons out mm -hmm. there with us. So That's, yeah. it was just a good area, and yeah. you know, it has we re researched everything from like the annual household income to see like you know what our target market was going to be and stuff like that. And it just being right in that area was where we wanted to be. So, so did you move there too? Um, so we we live in Saratoga Springs right oh, okay. now, but we're actually building a house in South Jordan right now. Yay, so yeah, fun. when is it going to be done? So, oh, that's a great question. <laughs> that's I the understand. Thing we're building. Yes, um, we're having to be in July. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. So you're selling your current home? Yes, so okay. it's up right now. So wow. yeah, crazy. Yeah, has yeah. it sold, or do you have an idea? Um, of, no. So we have we've had inquiries. Where we cool. have a real estate agent, so she's doing showings and everything. That's awesome. But um, she. It's actually going really well. That's so good. probably probably just a few weeks. Yeah. Honestly. So what would you do? So would well, you be able to stay? Out. So we moved out because oh. I have three kids. So I'm like, we're not. We can't live there no. while we're. I can't keep it clean and work and. For sure, I was gonna say wow. Showing so no. So we moved out. So we're living in Highland right now. Oh gotcha. Um, one of Jeremy mom's rentals. So oh we, we live nice. There. Okay, oh, I was like that's that? really yeah. nice. Okay, so that's we, nice. So we're in Highland right now. Good. House is showing and the other house is building. Yes. So yeah, Good. that's, that's process. exciting. Okay. So you'll be, so your current salon's in South Jordan. In South Jordan yes. Okay. So you took the dive, opened a salon and yeah. how big was that? Or like how big was, is it? It's small. Is um, it? yeah. So our salon is like just around 1000 square feet. Okay. Um, I it never bigger than that. It, we tried to take a lot of advantage of the space. It's yeah. very open and we have a pretty small break room. <laughs> okay. But, um, oh, <laughs> and you built that building. So the building was a pile of dirt. It was a new oh, construction, but okay. it has like three businesses yes. in it. And yep. so we chose the middle unit. So yeah, cool. so it was brand new, but we got to hire our own contractor and do the whole inside. <gasps> nice, okay. Yeah. Cool. So we did get to like design it and build it out. That's awesome. So, so yeah, we have five chairs okay. and we have two rooms. So we have a room for lashes and brows and stuff like that. And then we have a room for nails. Okay. So and wow. Then we do hair. Yeah. And then how many chairs is it? Five. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how many stylists do you have? Um, we have 14. Wow. So, and and they well, just, that includes our nail tech and our oh, okay. girl. Wow. And, and they all just kind of rotate and share yeah. a station or like. Yep. So okay. we have booth runners and we have commission. So we have everyone's my, I think my girl that works the most is three days a week. Okay. So yeah, everyone does one day, two day or three day. Okay. 
And then, yeah. And how often are you working behind the chair? Um, I'm two days a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're just kind of, do you work on the other days? Like, I mean, obviously as a salon owner, there's things to do. Yeah. I definitely, Friday is like my salon owner day. So I still have my nanny come on Fridays and I go into the salon and get stuff done. But I'm behind the chair Mondays and Saturdays and then do. Oh, you still work Saturdays. Wow. I do. Yeah. That's good though, because I feel like not a lot of people want to work Saturdays anymore. So I do. I take off one to two Saturdays a month, just depending on vacations and stuff. But I do. Yeah, I, I, I still double book. I have an assistant, so I just awesome. I slay on Saturdays. So yes. Yeah. How many clients a day do you typically have? Um, gosh, probably five is like a busy day. Oh, I wow, shoot for okay. four. That's good. Four is yeah. good. Two double booked and then two double booked and then yes. get home by like five. And is it like color and extensions usually, or what are you doing? Yeah, I would okay. say I would say like seventy percent of my clientele has extensions. Cool. So most of them. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so what has been like your most rewarding experience being a business owner? Oh man, most rewarding. So, I mean, Taylor Swift said it best at the Grammys last night when she got her award. I was like, wow, she's answering all my questions for me. What did she say? Cause she, I didn't even uh, hear the whole thing. Yeah. So she said, um, she had her Grammy for her, for the best album. And mm-hmm. she was like, I want to say that this is like the happiest moment in my life, Yeah. but I feel this way every time I like complete a bridge or mm-hmm. release an album oh, or listen. work or play with my band. She's like, I feel this rewarded every single day. She said, the reward is the work. Oh, and so oh. that I know, right? Chills. She's so deep. I love so her. The reward is the work. Yes. So I would say like, I just had like on Sunday, I'm literally at Denny's with my husband. So I was craving hash browns, crunchy hash browns, you know, <laughs> yes. baby, baby wants. So we go to Denny's Pregnancy. and I had a phone call. My, one of my stylists called me and I'm on the phone with her for like 20 minutes, uh-huh. just talking about her pricing and her business. And I get off the phone and I just feel so happy and rewarded. Yeah. Like that, that could be a like, mentor to someone now. Yes. Like just being a part of her success. And yeah. like, that is, that is the prize. That's the Grammy. It, I and love it's that. every day. So. I love that because I always feel that way too with like, our industry and just my career too. I feel like you can hit these big milestones that you dream about. And whenever that's happened to me, it's like, Oh, like, like it's not as like it, that doesn't mean my life's perfect or that that was the end goal. No, there's still so much more, you know? And I Mm -hmm. totally agree that if you enjoy what you do day to day, that is so much better than any milestone. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh my thank gosh. You Taylor Swift. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for giving us constant inspiration. Yes. That is awesome. I, so just like the daily things, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, what about the hardest experience you've had? Um, the hardest experience I've had, um, would probably have to be, um, I'm going to, I'm going to phrase this very eloquently. <laughs> um, I think in, Every salon owner will experience this. At this, I feel like it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. I think you've ex- experienced. I feel like I know it. where you're going. Yeah, I've experienced it. I think it's just a part of it, and it's that it's that experience where you find out that somebody in your management, someone that's worked for you for a long time, someone you're really close with, someone mm-hmm. that you maybe even consider family or a friend, um, decides that they need to ask a question Mm -hmm. and it's fine. Everybody asks that question. I've asked that question you have, and that's why we all have the success we have. And that question is what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. And so I think the hardest thing is when you have somebody in your business, Mm -hmm. in your network, ask the what's in it for me question and it goes the wrong way. Yeah. 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 So, um, and it usually ends the professional and personal relationship, yeah, it does. which is really hard. It does. And mm-hmm. it's so, it's so hard and devastating. We take it personal. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after, I mean, time heals. So yes. like after time, then you can look back and you say, you can see they're having their own success that maybe they couldn't have had with you and same for you. And yeah. so it's all the circle of life, but I would definitely say something that I, went into with the rose colored glasses was like, that's never going to happen to me. Yes. I'm the perfect salon owner. Yes. I, no one's ever going to leave me. No exactly. one's e- not ever going to not work for me, but yep. then you just realize it's just part of the, everybody's journey to success. It is. And every salon has turnover. Every business has turnover. And I think that's something that like is so hard to describe to someone who has never done it because I feel the same way whenever anyone's left my salon, just since I'm a little more public, I feel like people are like, what happened? They want the tea and like, oh my gosh, was she crazy? Was she hard to work for? And you're like, no, that's just life sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it was dramatic, but other times it was just like time for them to move on or like, yeah, maybe you, you implemented a policy they didn't like, but guess what? You have every right to, because you're a business owner and it's your business. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard because you get that constant outside judgment and everyone in our industry 
industry talks. Yes. And it's so, public. Cause like you yeah. see, it's like, it's like, you know, when somebody breaks up with their boyfriend and they delete, they delete all their pictures yes. and you're like, what happened? They got, everyone's just curious. Like, Why don't they work there anymore? And it's just going to happen. But yes. It's hard because on the flip side, what's not publicized is, um, that you still have success on your own, yeah. or maybe you even do come together. Like, I don't know if you've had that experience, but I have had time pass and had past stylists or managers mm. come to me and say, I'm sorry, or yeah. that didn't end how I wanted to. And we've had some sort of consolidation. And where sometimes it, all you need is that time, Yeah, you know, because to, yeah, just yeah. time heals. And totally. so yeah. it, and, but no, no one gets to see that part of it. No. So, or the emotions or like the real life conversations behind the scenes, you know, yes. I totally agree. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I feel like I, used to let it discourage me so often when that happened. And now I just have a different perspective on it. Like I've lost a lot of friends by being a salon owner and a business owner and having friends work for me. Mm -hmm. And it is so hard because when it is your whole life, you want to include the people in your life and you want to help people like succeed and be successful and have a great career. And when it doesn't work out, it usually destroys everything. So it can either be really good or really bad. And I used to take it more personally. And now I'm just kind of like, no, like this is just part of it. It of really it. is. You can't, can't be hard on yourself. Yeah. And it's such a fine line between prof professional and personal. Mm -hmm. And you just have to maintain that balance and know that whatever happens is going to happen. Yes. You just do your best. I mean, have you ever hired a friend you had from before or have you just gotten close with people? Um, I have just gotten close with people that okay. I worked with. That's yeah. good. That's mm -hmm. good. You should so. always keep it that way. Never hire people, you know, cause <laughs> it ends badly usually, <laughs> I, but that's I mean, the hardest lesson to learn. Yeah. So yeah. that was put very eloquently. It was. <laughs> I had, I was like, okay, I'm channeling Taylor Swift. What, yeah. Yeah, what would Taylor do? Yeah. That's our new motto in yeah. life. No, I really, I, I agree with you. I think that's a really hard one, but I think it's a good thing because it teaches you a lesson and each time it happens, cause it will continue to happen. Maybe on that, not that level, but you're going to learn how to handle it even better with yeah. each time that it comes. You know, yes. I used to like, I even see myself, like I used to shape my decisions based on how is so-and-so going to react or yes. how is this going to affect? And now I can't, I just say, okay, this is the decision I'm making mm -hmm. and they can leave or stay. Good for you. And in either way, it, it just doesn't matter, no, you know, it doesn't, it's our, it is all our life and it is what's in it for us. Like yes. we have to have that question for, well, you're the one who put the money up, the time, yeah. the energy, like you should be the one making those yeah, decisions. I'm doing this for my kids and my family. And yeah. so I, we've, as I think it's the thing that women do too, is mm -hmm. we have this guilt associated with, um, like selfishness, yes. but like men never get shamed for selfishness. They're admired for selfishness, right? Yes. Like in a career and, and role or any business, anything. So yep. I think it's just part of us, but yeah. getting over that a little bit. I agree with you. Cause I think that for me, I've always struggled with, um, I don't even know how to put this, but like, since I kind of have like a following and people know who I am as like an influencer. I feel like I have a hard time being a disciplinarian in my business because I'm like, they're just going to say I'm a bitch. And then they're going to be like, Oh, Jesse's a bitch. Cause like that is also like my life. Like it's not just about my business. People like to talk about my personal life too. So I always have had a hard time like putting my foot down. Cause I'm like, then I'm going to be said like, this is going to be said about me. And I feel like over the last like year or two, I've really kind of like changed that narrative and been like, no, it's okay to, you know, be strict and enforce things. It doesn't mean I'm a bitch. It just means I'm a business owner. Mm -hmm. And I've really had to shift that mindset for myself. And I'm so glad you said that. Cause that's probably one of the hardest things for me is like, yeah, someone may leave and they may tell people I was a bad boss or that I am a bitch, but I know my intentions and everyone who works for me and is around me knows my intentions. Yes. And one person can't change yeah, that. Let's take one person left, but 500 states. Exactly. 134,000 people. Yeah, you know exactly. What I'm yes, so, exactly. So yeah. I feel like that, you know, like, and it's funny because like the negativity always screams louder than the positivity. So even if you have amazing stylists still with you, it's so hard not to focus on like the one or two that have left or those negative situations. Yeah. But you're right. I think that every salon owner at some point is going to deal with that. Yes. It's like inevitable. It is. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely, that's it. <laughs> it's so hard. So how many booth renters and how many commission do you have? Um, it's pretty even. I think I have six booth renters. Okay. And then six commission, my nail girls commission, my lash girl. Okay. Booth rent, Wait, and you do nails now. And piercings. Right? Well, kind of. Okay. You started doing I do, that. I started doing it on the side. So we, my, the reason everyone thought I was crazy. The reason I was doing it is because yeah. we were trying to hire a nail tech, but we couldn't catch, 
couldn't catch one. I'm dying. You're like, I'll do it. So I'll just do it. <laughs> no, I'm the same way. I'm like, I'll just learn. I'll just Because people are like, so do you have like a ton of client, like nail clients? I'm like, well, no, we have none because we've never done nails. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, why would I come work here? I'm like, okay, fine. So yes. I'll just do it. So I started doing nails and I got Gosh. a bunch of nail clients and then we hired a nail tech and then I just switched. So did you teach her, yourself so. or how did you learn? Um, well, I did nail school like, yes. when I did Cosmo. Yeah. And so, and I've, I've done my own nails here and there. Wow. So I just kind of was like super beginner. And are I, you wow, doing luminary? Are you doing show? Yeah, like, we do luminary and hard gel. Yeah. So we just, I just started doing my clients and then they start coming and I'm dying. I'm so yeah, I'm like, okay, you all don't want to come in and build your own clientele. I'll yeah. just do it for you. Oh I'm my so, gosh. So now wow. did you end up hiring someone? So yeah, we caught a nail tech. So wow. Finally. Like, Here's a clientele for you yeah. that I did. So and then you're here welcome. you go. And yeah. so are you going to continue doing it or no? Um, probably not. Maybe okay. like a couple of my clients that I just, wow. you know, love to do. Well, but. you're so good at nail art. Like you started posting and oh I'm like, gosh, how did you, thank you, my nail girl does things. And I'm like, how? Like oh, your yeah. nail girl is making She's so great. But I'm like, I watch her and I'm like, I no, I would never be able to. It's so crazy. It's, it's, it was hard. I mean, I started doing it in like October ish. So it took me like three or four months to feel, feel good. And then that's finally when my heart, I'm like, great. Now I, yeah. now I feel like I'm very, now uh, I can mid, move over. Now I'm quitting. So that is so cool though. But like the fact why, that you can just pick that up that. and have a clientele for that. I that's amazing. Was, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a bitch myself, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm so sick of everyone complaining about how hard it is to build a clientele. You're not going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. Yes. So, I, so I did. I just started posting nails and then I built up, not like a massive clientele, but enough uh, yeah. for her. So yeah. Wow. So we have a new nail tech and she brought her own too. And okay. Then, so yeah, she was pretty busy. That's she's, amazing. She's really great. So that's Very why I was doing cool. that. My strategy. Yeah. yeah it wow. worked. Yeah, I mean, it, it only took a few months. That's yeah. so impressive. I'll prove you. Yeah. And you did. Wow. That's really cool. Okay. So sorry. So how many booth owner, how many commission? Um, so yeah, about six and six. Okay, cool. And then we have, I also have, um, an ear piercer. We do hollow oh. needle piercing. So I have her. Cool. What do you do? Piercings. Oh, hollow needle. Hollow needle. Oh, sorry. I was like, what? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Earrings. Yes. Okay. So she works in one of our rooms. Um, so yeah, there's about 14 of us total oh, wow. with receptionist, salon manager. Okay. I was going to ask, do you have a manager receptionist? Yes. Okay. Do, and are those like full time or? Um, no. So my receptionist actually just does one day a week right now. Mm. And we kind of change it during busy season. So like around Christmas time, we had someone there three days a week doing front desk, but because we have booth runners, they kind of do their own thing. Yeah. So yeah. Even they don't need it. Girls are great. And we're such a small space. So, yeah. um, but yeah, when it's busier time, we have her do more hours, but we have Katie who does, she's a stylist as well. And she does front desk. And then oh, Kylie nice. is my, she's my, um, salon manager. She does cool. salon maintenance and inventory. Nice. So she doesn't really work with, um, the people. Like okay. I work with my stylist. Yes. Like I do the people stuff and yeah. she does the, the back the office build, like changes the light bulb love that cleaning and yeah. then all the inventory for color and extensions and all that so stuff. what do you provide for your stylists that are commissioned um everything really like, wow we do shears hot tools <gasps> like, whoa wow. literally like they just That's show awesome. us yeah. and it's part of it is because we don't have space for storage oh we're okay. a tiny salon so gotcha. i provide literally literally everything every station is stocked with yeah, shears, combs, brushes. Wow. Blow dryers, wow, foils, crazy. everything. Yeah. Colors. So it's insane. like not, I mean, because you have multiple, you only have five stations. So you're having people rotating through. So everything just kind of stays at that station. Yeah, everything and wow. stays. Yep. Is it, yeah. And then what about your booth runners? Do they bring their own stuff? So they bring their own okay. stuff. We have, um, yeah, we have, we do have storage for booth runners. We're like full capacity on booth runners. Like I oh, can't I hire anymore because yeah. it's just, we're maxed out on our storage. But yeah, they provide, we only provide shampoo and conditioner. Okay, cool. So they have to bring their own styling products and then all their own color yes. tools, everything. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. That's awesome. I really love That's that. Fun. So do you have like a system at your salon where like they can move up or go to booth rent or? Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, we're kind of full on booth rent right now. Yeah. I try to always keep one spot open. Yeah. Um, and we can always move stuff around to make, if people really want to It's so hard when your building's what's limiting you. You're like, oh, I know. I, so, that's how our school is. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, with commission, we have two tiers. So tier one, it's all based on gross sales. Yeah. Um, and we level up, but we also level down. So oh, if they yeah. do two, if they do, we do it by the quarter. So if they have two quarters where they're not meeting tier two, they go back to tier one. Wow. So, and it's just small percentage yeah. change, but. I mean. I, that's a, a job. Owner, so. yes, yeah, exactly. You got to do it. I'm glad that you have that. Cause I feel like in the past I had like a system and people have been like, that's so hard. It's so unattainable. And I'm just like, 
and you have no drive. <laughs> exactly. Like you ha- like that's a normal yeah. job structure, yeah. you know? So it's good to hear. Yeah. Um, I love that. So something that I wanted to talk about is I feel we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but I feel like a lot of salon owners in our industry get the label of like toxic. Like I've had a toxic salon owner. She's a bitch, kind of like what we talked about. And I feel like that is a very common narrative in our industry. And though some of it may be true, I know there for sure are toxic owners out there. What's your thoughts on that narrative? Have you heard it a lot? And then also what do you do to instill like a positive work environment for your salon? Yeah. So, um, wow. <laughs> I know that was a big question. Um, a loaded question. <laughs> so yes, toxic salon owners. It's a very common phrase. You see it on social media. People spit it out all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I saw a reel on Instagram not that long ago by Gina Bianca. I'm oh yes. Bianca. Yes. And, um, it like empowered me in a way that I was surprised by because she was, it was kind of attacking salon owners, Oh, which, so I was kind of like, Oh, I should be bugged by that. But I was like, she's right. And it, wow. it was basically just talking about having ownership. Like if you have, um, if you have gossip in your salon, it's your fault. If you mm-hmm. have wow. this, if you don't have high sales in your salon, it's your fault. If you don't have this and it's like blaming yeah. the salon owner for everything. Mm-hmm. But then once you really think about it, you're like, you are responsible. If I am responsible for everything, yeah. like if there's, if there's gossip in my salon and someone's in my salon gossiping and I'm letting them be in my salon then it's my fault. Cause mm-hmm. I can control who's in my space. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and so, the president's presidents that you set for your team and the rules yes. you have in the structure and environment. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I love that. And, mm-hmm. um, I feel like I, I'm still a baby salon owner. I'm still pretty new mm-hmm. <laughs> and still figuring stuff out. We've been in our space for two and a half years. Okay. So still pretty new, still figuring stuff out. I'm sure you've learned a lot in that short time. We've learned so much and we are still not like a mega profitable salon. Like I'm not going to lie about making a bunch of money being a salon owner. Salons don't make money. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest (laughs) misconception about being a salon owner is like, you don't just get to quit doing hair and roll in the dough. Like you, you have to have something else. It's so expensive. It is. I like, I think if I stopped behind the chair, it would be a little scary. hundred percent. Just being completely honest yeah. with my business. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, what I was saying is like, I, and I'm actually consider myself pretty good at business, yeah. but, um, that's just how it is. Yep. Right. It's just expensive. So totally. I don't feel like I have a lot of like advice or input to give on that side of it. But as far as salon culture, I, I actually feel good to say that I feel like I have a lot of pride in my salon culture and I feel like every single person that works for me and even in the past works for me probably would have good things to say about me and that's 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 all really all that matters to me yes and um so just having ownership yeah um I feel like if you really do own like and control your space Mm -hmm. like you are the one responsible for it then you and then that's where that label, yeah, you kind of have control over that label. Do you want to be a toxic slumber? Nobody wants to, but if you're not taking ownership, then you are. Mm-hmm. I heard love. a quote the other day that said something like when a new person joins a, a new work environment, the culture makes them or they make the culture. So if you even hire one person who is a gossiper or mm-hmm. starts drama, Absolutely. it can ruin the entire it's thing. It's the bad apple in the mm-hmm. basket. It's mm-hmm. like such a simple yeah. metaphor, but yeah. The and you one, have to have a one standard. One bad apple will make the whole thing exactly you're responsible for yes keeping the fruit basket yeah exactly (laughs) it's kind of the reason we now do interviews for the students at our school is we're like being picky about who we let in because they're there for nine months and having a strong class can affect it can make or break Mm -hmm. it you know so I feel like it's so important to interview correctly hire correctly and then yeah set that example yourself as Mm -hmm. well because it can go downhill so quickly and culture is the hardest thing to change yeah for sure you're so smart to do that for I've never heard of a school interviewing Mm -hmm. student that's amazing I um we actually we just barely got full staff like maybe four months ago okay because we were such slow to hire yes and people would kind of give me crap for it really? and it was actually kind of when people would interview they're like yeah. why do you only have three people that work here and it's yeah. like because they're really good people sorry I don't know why you're it's like because I only want today. the best of the yeah. best you have to, to be, be here yeah so, I always say when I'm hiring too that whether it's a stylist or whoever what position it may be like if it is a stylist like I 
obviously care about their skill and how they do hair, but it's not the most important thing. Cause I can teach that. I want them to be a good person. I want them to be teachable and open and good with people. And I know they're just going to make the culture, you know, better because I feel like if they're amazing at hair, but I get a bad feeling from them, it's just not going to work out, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like that's like the number one thing is focus on the type of people you're bringing into your space. Cause Absolutely. it's quality key. over quantity, a hundred percent, which mm -hmm. is yep. so great. But I feel like right now, like it's taken us a long time, but I feel like we're so settled in our team right now at the yeah. salon that it's just so nice and like easy the, and yeah. great. The last year and a half has been, yeah, Amazing. it's been a game changer yeah. for sure. And that has kind of proved to me that I'm like, oh my gosh, it really just yeah. makes a big difference when you have even one or just two people or however it may be. But, and I like, I mean, when it comes to the school, like we have X amount of spots like per class that we're letting in. And I'm like, I would rather have a smaller class mm -hmm. than like not, than like let in somebody that I feel like is going to negatively affect the culture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like it's not worth it to it's me. It's not. Absolutely. It really isn't. Especially since they spend every day together for nine yeah. months, you know, mm -hmm. from sunrise to sunset. Yeah. It's huge. I love that though. And I feel like in our industry, salon owners are labeled toxic. And again, it can be your fault if you're a salon owner, but I also feel like um, I've had just stylists in the past or people who have worked for me that if I do implement a rule or a policy that they don't like, all of a sudden I'm toxic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's the biggest misconception out there about our industry is that you're just supposed to be nice and happy all the time and not have rules because we're a creative industry. And the minute you have structure to your business, I feel like sometimes creative types don't understand that. And you are hiring mm -hmm. creative types, right. you know, have you just, struggled with that ever? Yeah. It's just one of those things. Like you don't know until you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Like even like, even me and you before we owned salons, yes. we've had oh, owners that we I'm didn't sure get I along like with. That, that yeah. we, like I've had owners that I said were toxic in the past. Sure. Yeah. But then you do it and it's like hindsight. And then you also, you can put yourself in their shoes and yes. it's like, Oh, Oh, when you're like, when you take out a personal loan for this and your house and your family's on the line and what we sacrifice, oh. like when you see what goes into it, yeah. it's like, oh yeah. So yeah, we do have to have a dress code or exactly. we do have yes. to like, yes. we do have to yeah. be 30 minutes early, like, or what yes. those little things that seem to just irk the creative people or whatever, yes. because they don't understand because they haven't done it mm -hmm. and they, they never will until they do. And yep. if, if they don't, if you don't ever salon, own a salon, you just won't understand. No, totally. So I think we all just need to have, we just need more grace. Yes. For, so for everybody. I agree because I also, you know, like have been in their shoes too. So I get why they feel that way. But then yes, I'm like, but you haven't been in mine. So you have no right to say that until you know, but you're right. I feel like we all just need to stop judging each other, whether it's someone you're judging online or someone that you did work for or someone, you know, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think we all just need to realize like all the jobs that we do are hard and we're making it harder on each other by like putting each other down. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah. That's, and we also just, we can all do whatever the fuck we want. We have choices. <laughs> like you don't want to abide by the new dress code or the new hours or the, the you just go find somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. Just, they make it personal yeah. against us too. It's like, oh yeah, like she's a bitch because she yeah. wants us to be there 40 minutes before our client. Yeah. It's like, well, you can literally choose to go do your own thing. Yes. And always, yeah, nobody's forcing you to be here. Exactly. exactly. That's been and I love when, when people learned. complain too, because then it's like, well, the next place you work could have stricter rules than we have, you know, like mm -hmm. it's always, the grass isn't always greener, yes. you know, and sometimes you have to go to a few different places to find that out. It is kind of a little satisfying when they leave and go somewhere else and then it's worse and you're yes. like, yeah, well, yeah. And then they jump <laughs> yeah. around a ton. You're yeah. Like, you're like, oh, okay. It wasn't so bad here. Exactly. It's yeah. so true. Well, no, I love that. I think you have a really interesting perspective on it. So what is your next like five years? What are your goals for your business? Where do you oh, see yourself? Man. I mean, yeah, this is where in like big, goal setting mindset right now, just okay. with baby coming a yes. new house and all this stuff. So, I don't know how you were doing it with three kids and one on the way. Like it's crazy. I have two and I want to die. So that's <laughs> a lot. It's crazy, but I love it. Like my husband always says I thrive in the chaos. Like that's where I grow. I'm and I think, I think entrepreneurs because, have to have a little bit of that. Yeah. Like you have to be a little crazy and delusional. Yes. Yeah. So I thrive in it. So I'm like, bring it on. Yeah. Um, our five-year plan Gosh, I don't even, I don't know. We're, we're in this like goal making phase. I can't say I have a huge five year, like something specific, Yeah. but my, uh, my three year goal for the salon was to be full staffed and be profitable. And we're, we are yeah. going to hit that this year. So Good. that's huge because yeah. we're going to have our third year. So that's amazing. So that was big for us. And, um, my word for my salon this year, I choose a word every year for yeah. that. I want everyone to focus on is discipline. Ooh. And so I actually just had my, our, uh, beginning of the year salon meeting last Sunday with my girls. Okay. It was amazing. I 
loved it. I was bawling my eyes out. Aww. The hormones were going. We're all crying. I have three pregnant girls too, so it was like, oh wow, yeah, yeah. it was a great time. But um, <laughs> that's so good that you guys are all close too. Yeah, I like that. We're so close. So we just had like a really good um, touch base for like what we want for the year. And the word is discipline. And I told him that I am going to be changing my management style just a little bit and a little. I'm I'm kind of gearing more into the tough love this year for my girls yeah. good because I want to push them um how would you have described it before um what do you mean like your management style like you're going into tough love what what was so, it previously um more of a nurturing motherly mm-hmm. kind of role like it's okay like let me take care of this for you totally and let me have that hard conversation for you and whatever and I'm obviously I'm the commission style like salon owner I'm happy yeah. to have those conversations yeah. and do those things but I recently went to a Tony Robbins event. I think yes. you were like, where are you? And I, I was, was like, like oh, I need to go to this. this. It's really cool. It's yeah. kind of a little hooky dooky crazy, but um, some of it is really good. Yes. So I went to that and I learned so much. Okay. And one of the things that was really profound for me was he like drew this diagram and it was like just representing the world and just life. And it was, it was um, good times, bad times, strong people, weak people. Okay. And he was talking about just in over the history, how, um, hard times like the great depression, yeah. right. Make strong people yeah, mm-hmm. like baby boomers. And then, yes. all this and then, and then, um, that creates good times mm-hmm. and then good times creates weak people. Wow. And then weak people create hard times. So what it's I've like been doing cycle, yeah. is I've had the same staff since we opened besides these few new booth runners we've hired. Like most of my girls have been with me for three years. I so, um, I have been coddling them kind of mm-hmm. like babying them and taking care of them. They're You're baby stylists right out of school. Right. And yep. so, and I, I'm, then I'm seeing like, well, why aren't they like getting more clients and yeah. why aren't they up selling, selling retail and why aren't, why aren't they doing all those things? Why aren't they like going out and taking classes? And it's like, well, cause I pay for all their education. Why would wow. they go do it? And you so, do? yeah, I have, oh I, to gosh. this point, I, every education we've had, I have paid for it. And so, wow. I'm like, it's because I am creating weak people. Yes. And I told them Well, that. it's almost giving them a disservice. I used to be that way yeah. too. And I still struggle with it. But it's like, if you hand out too much, they're too never going to learn that exactly. skill on their own. Because people ask me, how are you so successful? I'm like, well, the grit. I have yeah. to do it myself. But then I'm not letting my girls do it for mm-hmm. themselves. Yes. And it's not even so. intentional. It's not like no. you were like trying to sabotage I didn't know that. until yeah. I heard him explain it that way. And he's talking about America. And I'm like, this is like, I'm like, no, salon. This is salon. This is literally every <laughs> salon. So yes. I told my girls, I'm like, I'm so, I said, I first have to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. that I have, um, enabled you yeah. to not reach the success that I've been able to have as a stylist. And I want you guys to all have this. So I'm changing my management style wow. and I'm ready to create strong people. Do you think there's going to be any pushback or did they all understand? Um, no, they understand. Good. Yeah. I'm really, <laughs> we'll see. yeah, we'll see if anyone quits. Yes, <laughs> right? You're like, okay, in six but months, I have no one left. Just kidding. They were all no, I think that's going to be great. To it. I mean, they were like emotional about it. Yeah. They saw, they see that I still care, but I need to, I need to do this for yes. their growth because they are like, they're having the same thoughts. Why am I plateauing? Yes. You know, why am I grown, grown, grown? And I'm plateaued at, you know, two years out of hair school. Why am I plateaued? And yes. how do I get to that next level? So they and want it, it for themselves too. It must be so hard for you to make that decision because you've been, like you, this is your business and your livelihood. So you've been putting in the most amount of work and you're like, I can't do it for you anymore. It's, it's terrifying because yeah, I am in a way like giving them more freedom Mm -hmm. and trust. Yeah. I have to trust them and let them figure stuff out. And so it's terrifying as a control freak. I can honestly yeah, say no, totally. <laughs> it's a little terrifying. Well, and it's funny. Cause I always say like every stylist, like whether you're at a commission or a booth rent salon, you are in charge of your own success for sure. Like if you're not posting, if you're not out trying to get referrals, you're never going to be successful. It's not just on the salon owner, but on the flip side, it's kind of like that reel you mentioned where if your stylists aren't thriving, you do have to look you in the mirror. You have some ownership. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a partnership in yes. a situation like that, I which that. I think is good that you're like self-aware enough to be like, like, oh, I'm going to take accountability for this and change it. And then they also need to put the work in too. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. you. I can't wait to hear how that goes. And we'll have to touch base yeah. and tell me if yeah. it, you I know, changes. It's going to be a good year for Ivory. So I'm sure. And it sounds yeah. like they're already great. It's just like going to the next level. Yeah. I love that. So yeah. when is your three year mark? Um, August. Oh, uh, fun. Yeah, August. That's year, exciting. So. Mm-hmm. It, that's, that's gone by fast. Cause I remember when you opened it, like the years since COVID have just flown. I know it's, it's all over. Crazy. I can't even, I can't even remember if it was three, but yeah, we yeah. opened in 2021. Yeah. So it'll be three years in August. Wow. Did you sign on stuff during 2020? Or was it uh, yeah, yeah. 2021? We started really building. Thing, yeah. We started building in December of 2020. Wow, or November, yeah. Christmas time. Was that like how? 
was that scary for you since it was like, I guess yeah. here in Utah, we weren't closed down anymore. <laughs> yeah, but we still, weren't closed. Like, like I knew I could still work. And, um, you know, like I said, our salon is small. Like I didn't go crazy. I wanted yeah. to make sure I had a space that even if shit hit the fan and yeah. that I could behind the chair could pay for you the whole salon it. by myself. Yes. You know what it's I mean? It's always smart to start off smaller for yeah. sure. Do you ever see yourself expanding to a bigger place? Um, Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. If it's necessary and if the growth is there, like I wouldn't want to stunt it. I love so that. So we'll see. Okay. Um, okay. So we do this thing called um, vent to your heart's content. So it's called a delve deck. Okay. And basically it's just like, it gives us a conversation starter and we can just vent about this topic. So okay. I'm going to choose a random card and then we'll talk about it. Hopefully it's a good one. You never know. Sometimes we get done. I know. I'm like, Ugh. oh, this is a good one. What part of adulthood isn't as cool as you thought it would be? Oh, oh, I really like this. Cause I feel like when you're a kid, I know literally <laughs> yeah. for it's real. kind of like what we just talked about, how you're always rushing for the next milestone. Yeah. When you're a kid, you always want to grow up and start driving and live on your own and do this, this, and this. But when you get there, you're like, oh, now I have to pay for all this and I have to have responsibility. And oh yeah, gosh, I'm I trying to think. Just um, like missing the bliss of not knowing. Yes. Yeah. Like, cause we want to know everything and then we know everything. And we're like, okay, can I just, Take I back. just want to be naive. Like, yes. can I just go yeah. back to that? I agree with you. Yeah. What do you think? <sighs> Mine is going to sound so bad. No, I want to hear but it. But I was just, I well, I was going to say marriage, just not because not, <laughs> not, not I'm, I'm like, oh, marriage sucks. But yeah, like, no I think it yeah. like you grow up like fantasizing about it and like romanticizing it. And like, it's so exciting. And yes. it's such an exciting the time in your life when you're falling thing. in love and like are planning your life together yeah. and then you do it. And then like, you actually have to deal with life mm -hmm. and it's hard. Like it's, it's, I don't think that marriage is hard. It's just that life is hard well, and you choose the person that you are, hard. are going to go through. Friendships, life. Yeah. business, relationships. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's just, again, the bliss and yeah. like not being yeah. as naive. Well, I remember being 12 yeah. years old and thinking that once you got married, then like life was like over. Yeah. But right? it's not, if you get married and life begins, yes. I mean, that's, it's, that's yeah. the hard stuff. And so. like you get married and you also just think like, Oh, like I'm, that's it. Like that's the end goal. Like yeah, your wedding you think exactly. of, yes. Like, yeah. Oh, I'll get married and have kids. And it's like, no, that is when life begins and real shit happens. Yeah. yeah. So and yeah. you fantasize about like, living together and like playing house when and being dating, able to go like, bed together and like, <laughs> totally. we like sharing a space. And you're like, don't touch yeah. me. And then it's yeah. like, but then I have to go to work to pay for our life. And then I come home and I'm exhausted yeah. and like, it just, Kids, and then you have to realize that you have to prioritize your relationship and it's just it's not the same as dating. hundred percent. So, Sometimes like I wish I could go back to dating just because yeah. it was fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when you're dating, you're like, when am I getting engaged? When am I getting married? And yeah. you're always like, you're like, am I going to see them tonight? Or what are we going to yes. do? You know, like you're totally. just not with them all the time. And so it's more exciting. I but agree. Oh, I when think, we go out, yeah. like people say, oh, are you guys married? Like, no, we're, he, this is my boyfriend. I'm dead. We love it. That's, that's so that's like, you. like a fun way to role play. play. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sometimes you have to tap into that. Yeah. I love that. Jordan will sometimes go out of town for work and I always tell him like it's hard when he's gone, but I'm also like, this is actually better for us because I think having a little distance can be yeah. good sometimes because mm -hmm. you get so stuck in just everyday life, mm -hmm. you know? That's a really good answer. Yeah. Hopefully I mean, Riker understands that. Yeah, no, it's nothing <laughs> negative against him. It's just, it's, it's just life. It's different yeah. and things are harder than you anticipate them I to agree. be. So I would say mine is probably similar to that, but one that's not as deep is driving. Cause I feel like as a teenager, you're like, mm -hmm. I can't wait to grow up and drive. And now I'm like, I have to drive that far. Mm -hmm. Like commuting is like yeah. such a pain that it's funny that like as kids though, we're like, I want to drive. I want to be sing like free was, yeah. and like, you know, I was actually driving this morning and I was thinking about like the day that I got my license really? and like how exciting it was. And like walking into school, like wearing my keychain yes. around my neck yeah. and stuff. Like, and now it's like, oh, holding oh the my car. Yeah, it's like, I'm in the car. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, oh. Oh, yeah, it's just I, like I don't drive. If I was a celebrity or really wealthy, the first thing I'd be buying for myself is a chauffeur. Yeah. Yes, not a driver. A chef. Like I don't need a maid. Yeah. Like yeah. the first thing would be a chauffeur. I then, agree. Then the Driving is a waste yes. of my time. I have so many better things yes. that I yes. could be doing. You, you can't be multitasking. Yes. yes, that's why I like text her with voice messages. Yeah. I'm the <laughs> same way. The voice way memos all day, every day now. Yeah. It's so true. No, I love that. That was that was a good one. I feel like it kind of went along with our topic. But um, was there anything else you want to say to finish it out? No, <laughs> you're like no. I said it all. No, I worked on it. I'm just so excited to be on. I feel like it was 
a much needed topic. Like as soon as you said it to me, like, oh, it's much needed. I, I love Agreed. like just talking about those taboo things mm-hmm. that people I agree. assume about Sloan owning and stuff. So. Yeah. And it's always good to like talk to someone who gets it. Like we've kind of discussed this, but like we're both moms. We both have hair extension companies and salons and do education. And it's not often you can relate to someone who does all of that. So it's really cool to be able to talk to someone who's like doing the same things mm-hmm. and has the same highs and lows. Yeah. So it's been it. really great. And that's why I look up to you so much. Oh, and like thank you. when I have those days, like I swear I'll have those days, like where something's going wrong with a staff member or whatever. And mm-hmm. then you post a story that's like, just remember you're someone's going to make you the villain in their story and it's yep. not you know, and I'm like okay I'm always posting like, quotes she can do it I'm like she can do it it's okay we're, like it's yeah. we're all united in this yes. like secret unity like it's true it's hard so it is it needs you. to be a club <laughs> like yeah. members members only <laughs> no I agree and I, I look up to you too and I think it's so great what you've done in a short amount of time so really really cool well it's been so great having you on and I think that everyone's going to enjoy this episode I will put Meg's info in the bio below so you can check her out um Thank you again for coming, especially when you're not feeling well. I really appreciate it. It's all good. Thank you but so you much. But you killed it. Was it was so fun. Yes, it was so fun. I can just feel how you feel right now. I can <laughs> just, Literally. Yeah. When I see a pregnant woman, like even just walking, I'm like, I feel that. You feel like, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last night like we were empathy. bowling and Taylor started having... Um, what's Contract. the word Braxton, Braxton Hicks, Hicks yeah. while she was bowling and I was like I felt like my stomach was tight oh, like I yeah. remember yeah. that I'm like yeah. oh so yeah I, I sympathize and you're at the beginning so thank I'm sorry <laughs> but it's gonna be worth it do it for the baby <laughs> yes, do it for exactly. the cute baby all right well thank you guys so much for listening and we'll catch you next time bye, bye. Thank you so much for listening to Just Jay-Z Podcast. You can catch us once a week here on Apple or Spotify, and you can also watch us on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe.